Well, have you ever been driving down the road wondering why your car is a little sluggish? Maybe why it's not taking off and why it's not moving as quickly as you intend as you put your foot to the gas pedal? Well, have you ever thought maybe you haven't released the parking brake? Years ago, I was teaching my daughter how to drive. As a young teenager, we went out to a parking lot and I had just told her all the aspects of, you know, here's the blinker, here's how to drive, here's the how to turn the car on, here's the time the car off, here's the brake, etc., etc., giving her all the just the general rundown and, of course, setting the parking brake. And then turning over the vehicle to her to say, now let's see how well you do as we navigate this parking lot. Well, suddenly, the wheels are spinning, the car's not really moving, it's just struggling along, and what's going on, Dad? What's going wrong? Well, honey, did you release the parking brake? Well, today, it's all about that in the journey of our spiritual life. How are we releasing those things that are the brakes holding us back from our highest and best? It's a service of releasing and letting go as we entertain the opportunity to do so through the burning bowl ceremony. Following my talk, we're going to gather together and those who are here in the room with us have a piece of flash paper. We're inviting you to write on that paper exactly what you'd like to release. Now, some of you say, wait a minute, I need a piece of paper that's at least six feet long of things I'd like to release from 2020. Or others saying it's all summed up in one big thing. It's just I'm writing 2020 on my paper and I would just love to release this year uh, and all that it held. Others are more specific of saying, I'd like to let go of fear. I'd like to let go of anger, resentment, hurt, disappointment. I want to release these things because I want to move forward. I want to release the parking brake that's holding me back from really uh, moving forward at a, a good pace. And I want to let go of the things that simply do not serve me. Because what we're actually inviting you to do is to release, which is really to surrender. Now, a lot of people say, wait a minute, I don't feel comfortable with that word surrender because a lot of times we hear of surrender and we use it in the context, give up, I quit, I surrender in this context. But I want you to stop thinking it from a negative, but thinking from a positive where we're inviting you to give up everything that no longer serves you, to surrender those things that don't really serve your highest and best. Fear, does it really serve you? Anger. How does it serve you? Jealousy, envy, disappointment, depression, sadness, on these things we go in our life that we've been carrying in a grieving process. How is it serving you? Is it helping you? Is it helping you to move forward? Because what we want to do is we want to just move on and we want to release that parking brake and jettison forward. We want to let go of those things that have been uh, not serving us well throughout the past year. And we want to just be in this mode of complete surrender to the highest and best. To just release these things is a sort of a, just a offering of peace, uh, filling up your life to say, I let go, I let go. I don't want to hold on to these things. I hope you're doing some work of surrendering some of the things that you have in your life, even in a tangible way, that no longer serve you. A lot of people are going through their closet right now as the, they think about the new year and they are just saying, you know what, I haven't worn this in a long time. And so we're seeing some very large donations coming in to our clothing closet. People are saying, you know what, why am I holding on to this? Do I really need this? These bell bottoms I've had for, what, 30 years, you know, that poodle skirt from the 50s. Do I really want that? You know, when will I wear that? I know you guys are all thinking about it and wondering, when am I going to wear that? But, uh, you know, really, when it comes down to it, you're asking the questions, do I need this? So on goes the list uh, that we may say of saying, wait a minute, let's do some house cleaning as we begin this new year. Let's ask ourselves, what things do we really need and what things do we no longer need? Because they absolutely don't serve the highest and best within our lives. So that spiritual sur surrender is really to stop struggling against what is and to let go of all these things that are there. Just saying, I'm letting go of that which I'm holding in mind and seeing in front of me. I'm letting go to what is and I am welcoming what ought to be. 
I am letting go of what is, and I'm welcoming what ought to be. I am now embracing. This is the joy I'm intended to live. This is the abundance I'm intended to live. This is the peace I'm intended to live in. This is the success I'm intended to live in. I'm letting go of what is, and what may be holding me back from that, and I'm embracing what ought to be in my life. So what we find is that there is a joy in surrender a real joy that comes to our life. It's a positive feeling that you have when you simply have let go of some heavy burden in your life. Let me tell you this. Uh, I traveled with a group of young people uh, who went from New York to Europe and then through Europe into Africa as a missions team. And each child, each, as I called them then, a uh, teenager, they were required to carry their own bags. Whoa, some of them were saying, well, wait a minute, I have brought way too much baggage. I brought way too many things. Some of those people, uh, you know, young girls were thinking, I need designer safari outfits for Africa, and I need some really cute things for Europe, and I want to look really fashionable when we go through Paris, and I want to be looking really great when we're in Rome. And so before you know it, they have carried a lot, and their heavy baggage was quite a bit. And when we came to a train station in Rome, the opportunity was for them to check some bags and leave some of that baggage behind. And let me tell you, what a day of celebration as people began to say, I don't really need this. I don't need this. I don't need that. I am setting this aside. I want to lighten my load because for the rest of the journey, I'm tired of carrying this. I'm tired of holding on. And what a joy it was to release the baggage, to release and let me tell you this, in our spiritual life, it's the same. There's an incredible joy of surrender when we're willing to release the things that no longer serve us. There's incredible joy that floods our life when we go, wow, life is so much easier to navigate. Life is so much more pleasurable. And I get to really enjoy each and every day because I'm letting go of some of this stuff I didn't need. I really, I don't know why I'm carrying it in the first place. So let me tell you this, there's this positive feeling that will come to your life through the experience of releasing, and it need not be just that we release today on a burning bowl service, but that we're learning to release every day of our life, letting something go that we no longer truly need. What it does is it enables us to have the opportunity to step out of all limitations, because quite often what we're holding on to, what's keeping us back is a parking brake of limitations. That's constantly saying, you know what, this is your world of limitation. You can't go any further. You don't go beyond this. It's not possible. And our focus is so much on the limitations of our world. But as we begin to let go of that thinking of what is and embrace what ought to be, what you intend to be, what you should be living as in your true divine nature, that great success, well, you're released to move forward. It also is a great joy that happens to your life when we are expanding beyond that usual conditioning, that conditioning that's going on that's always saying, here is the extent of how far you can go. This is your limitation. It's helping you to expand, to go beyond that in powerful ways. And it's opening you up to some infinite possibilities. And this is what's so beautiful is to know that there is an infinite possibility for your life. And in this year of 2021, I want you to start thinking and embracing infinite possibilities. Because as your mind goes into what is possible and you're letting go of limitations, wow, suddenly you begin to travel in dreams and imagination of all kinds of things that are available for you in your life. Looking forward to that by expanding your soul, by opening it up to say, I open up to these infinite possibilities because I have released, I've let go, I have surrendered. Now, when you surrender spiritually, what happens is you stop focusing solutions on situations that you can't control. You're looking at a lot of things and you're trying to force some solutions on things that you just can't control anyway. So you just surrender some of these feelings, some of these issues, some of these disappointments that you're trying to force a solution on that you can't control anyway. So you just release and you surrender to them in a sense of trusting that the divine source, the divine power already knows what is best for you. This is what's so beautiful 
is that in the essence of releasing, in the spirit of surrender, we elevate that energy of trusting that just simply says, I trust God that all things are working together for good. You know, I love this. It comes to me quite often. It's something my father taught me. It was an old hymn. God is still on the throne. Meaning that the universe is in control. The universe knows what's best. Meaning that God, this higher power, this infinite energy of possibilities is in control. God is still on the throne being a metaphor of how to look at life. That, that the highest and best is really what's ruling this world. Now, we may always entertain doubts and fears and questions, and we may always look to the worst case scenarios and the limitations, but that's not what's ruling this world. When we really allow the, the wonderful power and presence of God on the throne, the universal wisdom, the intelligence of this world to flow, that's what's ruling. He would sing that song to me and we would sing it. I'd be cutting his hair and he'd be singing, let's just join in singing it. 97 years old, he'd break into this hymn. God is still on the throne as an old Pentecostal preacher. Well, he passed away several years ago, but in moments of silence and in moments of stress or worry, when it wants to flood and come into my life, I can hear him singing. I hear an inner voice, a voice of remembrance of my father's voice saying, God is still on the throne. Let me tell you this, when you're willing to release, to surrender, you're able to just fall into the wonderful consciousness of full and complete trust, knowing that God is still on the throne. And you can surrender easily because the divine power is in control over all things. When you allow, when you release, when you let go, that's it. Pull on that parking brake and release it. Bam! What happens? Yes, you get to move forward. That's the same thing that's happening in your spiritual life. As you begin to trust, you released that parking brake and you now have this ability to move forward in great ways. What we find is that Eckhart Tolle says, surrender is to say yes to life. And I love his thought around this. Because when we're releasing and letting go of all this negativity and the things that no longer serve us, what we're doing is we're actually saying yes to life and all of life's possibilities. We're saying yes, 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 yes. I say yes to all the good that's out there and all the infinite possibilities of success, prosperity, health, and wholeness that are available to us. We actually begin to let life work for us when we surrender when we let go. Because what happens is we begin to move down this divine flow of the sort of, shall we say, of the stream of blessings. You know how it is? Maybe you had the opportunity to go inner tubing down a, a wooden stream, uh, maybe somewhere. Uh, years ago, uh, we used to get together as a group and go inner tubing every year with an annual event. Everyone get in the inner tube, get into the river and let the current carry us down. We'd gather together, tie some inner tubes together and have one inner tube that had a cooler in it and some snacks and, and food and laugh and joke and just enjoy ourselves, just simply resting and allowing the current, that flow to carry us down. Then, Along the journey, someone would grab onto a rock or grab onto a tree limb or something and would hold the whole group and hold us back. And we'd be like, well, why are we not moving in this divine flow? Why are we being carried in this wonderful current? Well, something's holding us back. So it is when we are surrendering and releasing, we're saying yes to life and we're letting life work for us. Letting that divine flow, that current of God's goodness to flow and to carry us through every single journey of our life. For this surrender is really something that is a gift you can give yourself. Now we just completed a wonderful season of giving gifts. Oh, you don't have to stop there at Christmas, even though it's over, but we think about all the times that we've given gifts uh, and that, that Christmas is a gift giving season. But how about, did you give a gift to yourself? Did you give the gift of releasing? of letting go, of surrender. It is a great spiritual gift that you can give yourself because what happens is you then let go of this ego that kind of tries to control everything. You're always trying to control it. And you know, I think we are as humans sort of ingrained with the fact that we think 
it's really good to kind of control everything. We kind of think uh, good people know how to control and we should always be in control and we should never let go of control. And so we've kind of got this thinking ingrained rather than just saying, wait a minute, I release and I let go and I let God, the divine wisdom of this universe being in control and allow it to lead and to guide and direct my life. And in doing so, I release this search and this constant quest for how is it gonna happen? How is it gonna work for me? How is prosperity gonna happen? How will I be blessed? How, how, how? Just let go, release, let go of that parking brake. Release, let go of that branch or rock that's holding you from floating down that beautiful river in divine flow in current. So what happens is there are some real steps that we need to take towards this journey of surrendering. And the first one is acknowledging that you have faith. A full surrender requires that you have faith, that you really have a faith that you have so strong that says, I don't need to think about anything else. I don't need to go anywhere else. I don't need to devote my time to any other goal. I simply trust and my faith is at work. My faith is so strong in believing I have a confidence that God is working even now in me, through me, around me, and always for me. So this is really an essential component to the surrender, is saying I have faith in the divine source. Another is a sense of patience. That's right. Because in surrendering, we constantly want to find the instant gratification, the instant answer right away. But surrender may say and require us to simply be patient, to be patient and allow things to unfold in the right and perfect time in our life. So let go of something that's been holding you back that no longer serves you and be patient for the right and perfect things are all coming into alignment in your life. For that which you are seeking, is seeking you. That's a beautiful thought. Because when you're seeking your highest and best, when you're seeking blessing, when you're seeking prosperity, when you're seeking loving relationships, I want you to know that that which you are seeking is already out there seeking you. And there's this wonderful spiritual alignment that happens in our life when we are patient and we allow things to unfold then in its perfect time. This patience allows things to unfold naturally that's right. In the spiritual world, things unfold naturally as they should. There's not a lot of force. There's not a lot of uh, aggravation. There's not a lot of challenge. Let me tell you this. If you've been knocking on a door so long and that door doesn't seem to open up, after a while you have to ask yourself, is it really meant for me? Because quite often those doors that don't open up naturally for you may not be the right door for you. So what we wanna do is just be patient. And in that patience, continue to release, let go of anything, but know in great faith, all things are working together for good. Then this surrender also requires that you are simply aware, to remain focused, to be so diligent in this, that you are really aware of this divine presence. And as you release to it, it is at work. And I am so aware of the divine presence in my life. This is what you need to claim each and every day. Say that I am so aware, I am so conscious, I'm fully uh, in tuned and aligned with the fact that God is leading and guiding and directing my life. If you haven't memorized Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 by now, you should. Go to your Bible and really write that passage down because it's a guiding truth for our lives, which simply says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and that is this surrender and in all your ways and lean not on your own understanding. And that is your surrender and all your ways acknowledge him. And that is your surrender. And what will happen? God will direct your paths. So why are you holding on to all this stuff you don't need, all this crap, all these emotions, all this baggage that you're carrying? Why? When you know that it is God's desire to direct you, lead you, guide you. For that divine shepherd wants to take you to the still waters and greener pastures that you might feel nurtured and strengthened in this journey. Another, another aspect of surrender and releasing is meditation. 
really want to encourage you because what happens is meditation is the act of surrender and the single most powerful tool that you can have in your spiritual journey because you are then involving uh, and engaging, I should say, in this moment of just incredible uh, quiet uh, to the self to reconnect with the higher power. Let me tell you this, you will find the ability to surrender or to release so much easier as you sit in the stillness and become fully conscious of the love of God flowing in you, through you, and around you. And I want you to just pause for a moment and just reflect in a moment of meditation of the love of God and let it be just washing over you in such a way the love, it's intense love, it's beautiful love, it's a glowing love, it's a white uh, glowing essence of love. You might picture it in so many different ways, but it's a love that seeks your highest and best that enables you to easily surrender and to release those emotions of fear and anger and resentment, disappointment, those things that are just weighing you down. Now, we also want to understand that when we slip into the silent spaces, that between those thoughts, what happens is you surrender that small self within and all of its limitations. And when you do this, you're just really surrendering every aspect of your life to this silence, to this beautiful silence that is the presence of God, that still small voice that's ever speaking to us. Another aspect of this surrender is devotion. Ancient scripture tells you to set aside time every day for the contemplation and to really live a life of devotion to the divine. Devotion. I am devoted to it. This will enable you to be able to be great at releasing, at surrendering at all times, to recognize your life as spiritual and to develop your final le finer levels of feeling, to just be so devoted to this journey that you just become more and more aware of the feelings of goodness. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And be aware of that feeling and devoted to that goodness and allowing that goodness to unfold within our lives at all times. Now, to offer everything to the divine is really this wonderful act of surrender. And it's the first step and the final step to letting go of this old world and building a new world, okay? So in 2021, where you want to build something new and let go of the old, you wanna let go of all the challenges and problems, those things that held you back in 2020 from your highest and best, and you wanna begin building a great and successful year in 21, well, what happens is as you surrender, you're taking that first step and it's the last step. It's the first step and it's the last step because when you've released it, you've let it go. Now, do we really understand surrender? Do we really understand releasing? Because some of us have the crazy idea that your release is to kind of hold on a little bit of it. You know, just let go a tiny bit, but still hang on, you know, and like it's not full release, is it? You can't have the parking brake somewhat on and just a little bit on and still intend to move forward at the speed you'd like to. So you've got to release it totally. You've got to let go of everything. And that is that complete trust within our lives. Not holding on to any aspect, but to release those things again that did not serve you well. This is the power of releasing. So complete surrender is the final fulfillment of your spiritual life. I surrender to the all good. And you're going to experience this incredible fulfillment in your spiritual journey as you do so. So I'm inviting you today to join us in this wonderful experience of surrender and of releasing and letting go. In just a few moments, we're going to step to the first.